I don't think she did. Danny McGarrow. We're not going through that again. All right. <laughs> Welcome to two. Hello. <clears throat> Hello, welcome to Tutors of Life podcast, where we research life so you don't have to. Episode 278, this is your host, Sean Tudor. And this is Sam. And this is a talk episode where the tutors talk. You just did a very nice long intro. Yeah, you did. A little breathing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and here we are, rolling. Finally. Finally. What's up? What's new? What's cooking? Um, I don't know. We can... Um... Work, work stuff. Got some decaf coffee. I know, I'm totes jelly, man. Pretty totes good. jelly. Oh, that's that hits the spot. Um, so what's up? What's going on? What do uh, I already said work, some work shit. Yeah, what do I talk about today? Whatever you want to talk about. You talk about our projects if you want, quick. Uh, what do we um, what do we talk on Sunday about? Tutor on. Mm-hmm. Um, time. Time. What was the last time we talked? Last Friday. No, last Tuesday. Last Tuesday. Okay, I'm trying to think of what's happened in that time span since now. I don't know so much. Um, Sean pulled me out of the office this week, so I've been uh, working in the homes. Um, we've uh, working in the homes like we got fucking group homes. Group homes. I know, dude. Let um, us see. I felt the exact same thing when I said that. But uh, so yeah, we have a flip. We're finishing up. Um, it's just so it's so funny because I've heard Sean discuss this forever and ever with like. When I wasn't a part of the construction yeah. business, but it's just—it's very interesting to like witness it. How you can think something's almost done, and then it's like three days of finishing bullshit. Yeah. Um. So we've been at there what in the afternoon or two mornings now, and then half of today and probably all of tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um. A lot of it, I mean, everything's always a learning experience. So, like, we've realized, like, we should have done periodic walkthroughs throughout this process because quite a bit of it we could have been doing when someone was doing the work upstairs. Or So, because, like, the basement really needed to be vacuumed and cleaned and stuff like that. So, that could have been done a month ago. It is really a big thing where it's, like, and even... Hmm. Even like Casey's, mm-hmm. like that little drywall patch, that little spackling patch that needs to happen. Since the electric guy's been in there, we've floored after the electricians, trimmed. How how we have how we have guys there for four days. How we got guys there for four days and not once did it get mentioned that we have a little patch. Yeah. How do you it was you can see it. Mm-hmm. You can see it's so. I'm like, <clears throat> I don't, I don't know how that's just like, you're you're looking past that. What should have happened is you're down there waiting for the glue to dry for the floor, and you fucking hit it with some spackling, mm-hmm. and then boom, you hit it with some paint a little bit, or maybe you got to do a little dusting sand. I'm like, how am I? Oh, other great point. The threshold. No, How yeah. do I have to go back now? So we went back today mm-hmm. to do the final walk through the last couple things and clean up. Like final, like boom, put the bow on it. And Sam and I are there and I'm like, How the fuck these two things that just scream at you? Like the, immediately I noticed the threshold and then Sean noticed the Spackling. The spackling like, because well we are on two different sides of the room, so yeah. that's why. But yeah. It was very, very obvious and I was just like, Okay. Because now that's two things that we didn't have when we were there. So now we have to go get the material for it Mm -hmm. and then go back. So it's it's been very interesting because, like, me, Sean, and Brooke are kind of going to be, like, the finish team a little bit. Mm -hmm. Sean will be probably more throughout the project. But Brooke and I will be more part of the finishing work. And then the other guys are all, like, 
throughout the whole pro like will be there for most of the process so it's it, we're gonna have to work on the communication between the finish team and us or and them because we should have known before we even got there today that there was a threshold and that's backlink if they would have let us know that we would have rolled up today mm -hmm. got that spackling on that wall mm -hmm. i'd have got the glue on the fucking threshold so it's good and solid mm -hmm. then we would have done everything else the end of everything a little dust on the spackling throw a little paint make sure the threshold stuck mm -hmm. exit stage left yep now we got to go back put spackling put the threshold either hang out for an hour or and you know I, I was actually thinking about just asking if we come over and do it tomorrow evening mm -hmm. like i could just you know whatever because it would just hang out and and well, have I mean, a drink or whatever. And only one. No, I'm, Saturday evening. I'm sorry. Oh, Saturday evening. Yeah, just like, hey, guys, if we just stop over to these us. But, but like a normal customer job, dude, what a – I'm not going to hang out for yeah. an hour. Like, so if you think about your opportunity cost, we don't get paid for that. Yeah, no. None of that, none of that we get paid for. No. And so now, like, wasting the time to go get the material, coming back to – so anyways, going on a huge rant here. The fucking attention to detail throughout a project, the fact that somehow only we are able to attention to detail doesn't register in my damn brain. Mm -hmm. This shit, dude, it's not almost done. It's not even close to done. I go in there and I'm like, this is fucked. This is fucked. Sam's like, well, these are all fucked. Not at Casey's, but at like Bellevue. Yeah. Like, why the fuck did we put, why did we put white electrical covers over fucking painted ivory light switches? In what fucking world are we living in? Right. One of the fucking outlets was shattered. It was sh it was crumbled. If you try to stick something in it, sparks. I'm like, who? Wh what fucking world are we putting up a white outlet cover on this and going? Looks good to me. Mm -hmm. What? Yeah. Anyways, <clears throat> so um, this I love. I love the guys we work with. I love our team. I love the dudes. It. It's it. What it comes down to is us setting the standard mm -hmm. and expectations with them. Hey guys, when we come in here, like I expect to not see a fucking thing. Mm -hmm. I expect to roll up, cruise through this shit, and go, "Damn, you fucking guys rocked it down to the last little thing." Mm -hmm. And that's what like with Bridget's. I think it'll be fun. Um so what's next so paint and then just carpet paint carpet and plumbing more plumbing needs to be done well like um oh finishing the sink and yeah finishing finishing the vanity and uh uh putting the uh f bath fixture mm -hmm. um the faucet and all that shit on the so like that's something so before they're even done done like they say they're done so like while mm -hmm. they're doing those last two things, like we should go in there because then we can be like, okay, so these are all the, like, this is all the things that are left. We know the five of us could knock out all these things in half a day. Right. Yep. So then like we can do it while they're still there. A hundred percent. I think that's the best thing we could do. Mm -hmm. So then, then we're all exiting at the same time. There's no more going back and doing all that stuff. And that's how I think about like, you know, if you think about us as like the finishing, you know, crew coming at the end. I mean, I think it, we should be doing that the same like while they're there. We mm. should just all be getting it done, finishing up because, I mean, look at where we're at right now. Like I'm in redoing the closet. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay. I had to pull off to go get the material to do the, the closet where I could have been like, hey, why don't you guys demo this, prep this, everything. I'll grab the stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then when I get back, we'll be able to just instantly slap it up. Yeah. Instead of it's like, boom, pull not. So there's that, there's an hour and a half of nothing happening. Nothing's getting done. Yeah. And so, and there's a lot of that stuff that's like that, that could well, have kept going. And like... Why couldn't someone be filling the nail holes on the trim while Kyle's painting? Because he's spraying and it goes too fast. Okay, I see that. Yeah. Yeah, he's just go. it's too fast. Mm -hmm. But I mean, so like today, mm -hmm. like he's just 
he's just doing trim. So like we could have had Brooke there filling in nail holes today. All day, for sure. Mm-hmm. We could have, yeah. You and we couldn't. Kyle did ask us to come help, but we were too busy. Yeah. But like in a perfect world, yeah, we would have been there filling. Like you and Brooke have been filling nail holes while I, Kyle and I and Mike did trim. 100%. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. There's, it's, there's just so many things like that. And you guys could have been cocking and everything, right? There's so many things, dude, when you look at this shit about like becoming efficient with it mm-hmm. and uh and so anyways this is just a rant about you know sean whatever do you know what pemdas means pemdas mm-hmm. what's that p-e-m-d-a-s PEMDAS. god it sounds familiar order of operations process math? expectations no okay no it's a math math thing okay Parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. That's why I recognized it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, you always see those like, uh, like those things on Facebook, and they're just like, I bet you won't get the right answer, and like most of the time, it's because there's a parentheses in there, and sure. people fuck up the order of operations. Parentheses. Exponents. That's the top thing. Mm-hmm. Okay. Multiplication. Mm-hmm. Division. Mm-hmm. Multiplication happens before division. They're technically equals, mm. um, but yeah, they're technically addition subtract. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Same with additions and yeah. subtraction; they're technically equals. Um, but like usually, you see one that's like four minus two parentheses three plus two or whatever, mm-hmm. and people do the. Um, They'll go in order of like left to right. Right. So the a lot of times people do the parentheses first though, mm-hmm. and then they'll be like, okay, then it's three minus two, and then so it's one times by what's ever in the parentheses. And yeah. it's like no, you have to do the multiplication before you do the. Yeah. But whatever, um, we need to figure out our pemdas pemdas. Mm, I see what you're saying. Yep. I was wondering where you were going with this. Mm-hmm. So that makes a lot of sense. I like that a lot. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Mm-hmm. Yep. I like that. Yeah. It Right now is also, Sean and I were just talking about this today as well, about how we need to like figure out a better timing. Because <laughs> like this week is just two projects finishing, really. We have to be careful with our amount of people we have having... Like, we we essentially have three deadlines ending all this Friday. Mm -hmm. And having three different projects with three deadlines of Friday, not the smartest thing we could have mathed together. No. It's just, we're stretched too thin. Everyone's just, it's just a a shit show. So we need to to be a little bit better at staggering. and, And I think that, I think going forward, that'll be actually pretty easy to do. In the realm of like, um, I just think it'll be easy to do, a lot mm-hmm. easier to do. Um, also, we should just always expect when it's a week of finishing that someone's gonna be sick. Oh, dude. It happens ninety five percent of the time. Any time we have a fucking deadline, someone doesn't show up. Mm. It just happens at every fucking. It's like no, no, no deadline. Everybody's there constantly. Whatever. As soon as there's a deadline. Someone gets sick. Something happens in the family. Something every weird. time. Every fucking time. It's hilarious. Um, but anyways. Uh, so yeah. It's just kind of. It's all just part of the learning shtick of it all. Mm-hmm. Um, something that uh, I, I blogged on. And uh, Hermosi talks about a lot. And so does Andy Frisella. Um, it's like. Wow. Uh, extending your horizon and we listened to that about time and stuff that Mm -hmm. he was talking about so it's like a lot of the times we think in three to five years and and uh or you know just like short-term instant gratification things like that and i think there's some i mean i guess sometimes there's like a uh sometimes there's a uh, there could be a benefit to that like we've got some friends who've you know, been at a job for a couple of years, bounced to another one for a higher position, bounced to another for a higher position, you know, and they, they bounced, you know, blah, 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 three, four times and got higher positions every time, right? 
Um, in that scenario, like you're in the same career field and you're moving and you're progressing, I'm not mad about it. That's that's pretty fair. Um, that's that's a pretty like uh, valid thing to do, right? Mm. But eventually, you you should lock down with a comp with some with a. You should be loyal to some. Company. With something, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, if it takes you walking your way up to reach to the the company you want to be with, you know, and you've just been gaining your skill set and walking your way up and entering higher positions, yeah, it makes sense. That's cool. Um, I guess less of that, uh, like, cause you're you're still staying in the same field, mm. you know, you're still staying, and so I'm not really talking about that. I think that definitely has its place and definitely be very beneficial what i'm more saying is like the jumping from thing to thing to thing to thing right yeah and so what they said is like and what they've said and then this was uh this i'll i'll say why this this like stemmed from everything so if you can take if you if if you start something new um, and you do it for a year or two and go, oh man, this ain't working. I'm going to move to something else. Do it for a year or two. Oh, this ain't my job. Move to something else. Oh, year or two, this ain't working. And you move to something else, right? And you, you're always just, you're never getting good at something. You're always in like a training period. And it doesn't seem great because you never, it, you don't give yourself enough time to like fully catch on and fully be great, right? Now, if you can take and dedicate yourself to, um, and, and, and there's, there's different like, layers of this too but um you know if you were just to say hey i'm gonna i'm gonna be a machinist right like i'm gonna be a machinist that's what i'm gonna do mm -hmm. and you just go and you machine forever like that's like you just you're a machinist and then you know as you're you become so proficient at it <clears throat> you're this isn't so many careers when you become so proficient at something you see stuff that people don't see right like mm -hmm. you 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 just know things because you know things. Mm -hmm. And so you're able to like, you'll know if something's going to fuck up. You know if something doesn't feel right because of, you know, you've just done it so many times. It's like subconscious to you, right? You just know it's, it's nature. You like, you just know that this is what it, it's something's off. Something's not off. Right. And you're really proficient at it and you're able to make the most like per dollar an hour. Right. Yeah. And so you think about all that. And maybe move up into management so then you can spread your information and your knowledge and pass those teachings on to people and things like that. I love it. Maybe after management, you end up being in some consultant role, project project manager, anything, anything in that realm, right? You work your way up so that way you can, as you age, you could then disseminate your knowledge to everyone else. And I think some worker bees, they get so in the monotony of like doing the same shit that they never think about the fact of like your body's going to get tired. You might end up getting a little grumpy and things like that. Well, what if you were to back off and and go into more of like a mentor role, right? And like help people underneath you and pass on that knowledge. Because I think about it right now in construction a lot. I'm seeing some dudes. We got like Mike. We got Nate. We got uh, Bernie. You know, to just name a few of the, the main guys I think of that have copious amounts of knowledge, mm -hmm. 20, 30 plus years of knowledge, right? And so being around those guys and going, wow, like if I were to take a few more years just doing the work itself, I know dollar per hour, it's not going to make me the same kind of money. I know that short term, it doesn't make me the money. Mm -hmm. But if I'm dedicated to the craft of construction and I'm dedicated now, I want to do this for 50 more years. Okay. I want to be 80 years old doing construction. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean I'm going to be swinging a hammer at 80. I could just be consulting. Right. I could just be like over, like I could just be uh, overseeing a project or overseeing a, a, being a mentor to the guy that oversees the project, whatever it is. Right. But when you take and you look at it that way and you go, okay. Instead of worrying about what's going to make me the most money today, think of, okay, well, if I'm going to be doing this for 50 years, how in 50 years am I going to be the best? Like how in 50 years am I the best motherfucker around? Um, and you take in, <clears throat> you go, okay, well, 
I need to learn more. Mm-hmm. So if you spend the first couple of years learning more of the actual day-to-day construction, and then you go, okay, I'm going to take this information that I know from being uh, doing the work and learning more of it, and and like getting proficient, and knowing like when you're there, what you need to look for, and that's something Mike talks about. Fucking agnesium. is that the word? Agnesium? for what? I don't know. It's like like talks at length on. It's a fancy word. I heard it the other day. Whatever. Anyways, he talks about it all the time. We'll just say that. Okay. All right. Hey, also, if I did have that word right, I'm fucking smart, dude. All right. <clears throat> he says, like, he, he's been going on quotes and stuff with me, and he said to me the other day, like, hey, Sean, I'm very confident you know what the material costs. You have a general idea of how many hours it costs. He's like, I hope you're understanding, and I think you're understanding that when I'm on these quotes with you, I am there to point out the shit you might forget and you don't see because you haven't done it hundreds of times. Mm -hmm. I'm like, exactly. But as as I work on things and the more projects I see and the more projects I do, I'm like, oh, this thing right here stumps us up every time Mm -hmm. well we need to add hours there or like i didn't i i forgot to look or pay attention to the fact that we didn't have as many hvac runs as we did right so okay well that's a 200 hundred dollar fuck up okay for every hvac we forgot it's 200 dollar fuck up okay and and you take that and you do that at at scale so if i'm bidding out a full basement and i forget to account for the fact that I need valves for all my shutoffs. Fuck, dude, right there, I'm at a hundred bucks lost. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, did I remember that I like when we're talking about running wires? Am I breaking it off of? Hey, I need a breaker for lights in a room. I need a breaker for outlets in a room. You know, and you got to do that for every room. Okay, well, if I thought or I didn't whatever that you could put them both on one, I just lost out on that extra wire, right? And so it's not even that it's like a crazy amount, but all those things add up, right? Mm -hmm. And so while we're there, it's like, Mike's like, hey, remember this, remember this, remember this. Then we sit down afterwards after I put together the whole estimate and I go, hey, what do you think? And he's like, hey, do you remember this? I'm like, nope. sometimes I do, sometimes I don't, right? And so it's those things that, you know, at face value, it's it's like, oh, it's a hundred bucks, it's 200 bucks, okay, whatever. But if I make that mistake every single time, that's five hours of profit, mm-hmm. you know, or whatever, whatever it is, however many it is. Like, that's many hours of profit that I'm losing because I didn't fully think through and calculate and put that shit in. Mm-hmm. And so, what I'm getting at here is, I, so like my role is going to be more the sales, okay? And and we have a, a a garage estimate coming up. And so on the garage estimate, I'm going to bring Nate with because Nate's going to be doing the one doing all the framing. So yeah. I'm going to do that with him. I'm going to let the customer know, hey, I'm going to come back with my concrete guy. And I'm going to come back with um, the guy that has to do all the plans because we'll be tying into a house. And if you're tying into a house, you got the blueprints, everything, and make sure it's code and all that shit. So anyways, I want to do those projects with those guys, do the concrete with them, You know, be there for when they do some of the, the excavation be there to help frame and all that stuff because I, my, my ideal is in, you know, I don't, I don't, it's not going to be a year, but say in three years, none of those guys need to be with me mm-hmm. when I go, when I go out, I've already been through the walkthrough enough with the guy that does the materials. I've already been through the walkthroughs enough with Mike or Nate or Bernie that I know what I need to look for, what the process feels like. I know the things I'm looking out for, right? Mm-hmm. And so my whole point to the whole thing is like if I want if I want to do this for 50 years and, I, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do this for 50 years, spending those three years so that I'm a fucking phenomenal, like great at doing the sales and knowing what I'm selling in three years – is worth me doing more of the on ground work with the guys than to just go sell more jobs and have them do it. But then I'm not, I'm not ever like that. I am then reliant on them still for every single project mm-hmm. I go do, right? Like yeah. at some point, I have to let them do their work and me go do my work and not always lean on somebody. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. 
And so, and like I talked to uh, George about that, and George is like, yeah, what most people don't like, the a lot of the laborers will be like, oh, the salesmen, they just drive around, and they sit in the office and whatever. And George is like, what you motherfuckers don't know is these guys were doing what you were doing for ten years before they got into this role. Mm-hmm. Because you need, you should, you should know what you're doing. You should understand the whole process of things, right? Yeah, you should know what you're selling. Know what you're selling. And so, I mean, it's a huge, huge difference if. If all I was selling was a car, right? If all I was selling was a car um, and it was the same, you know, I worked at a Ford dealership and I sold Fords. What's up? Yeah. You loving this? Yeah. Are you? I haven't said anything for like 10 minutes, so keep going. Do you like that or no? I don't care. Or like um, a, a good example is like Window World. So you're selling windows and siding. Okay. That's not crazy. Mm-hmm. We're talking general construction. Everything construction. Like... The amount of fucking different things in that is insane. There's just, it's it's endless amount of shit, and that's part of the thing that's like kind of a little overwhelming. Is like, and why I need guys to lean on is I'm not going and just doing windows. I'm not going and just doing siding. We're doing everything construction, right? And so, um, when when you look at that, <clears throat> it just. You, you have to take more time and be willing to dedicate your life to it instead of just like, oh, I'm going to do this for a couple of years or whatever, right? Yeah. So what brought this up was uh, the, the job we're on now, um, she talked to Kyle and she goes, hey, we're going to have the house paid off in six years. We love how the basement's going. In seven years, we would like to have you guys update the main level if you're still in business. It's like, fuck, dude. You think about that. Yes, we should still be in business in seven years. But think of how many businesses aren't. Right. Think of how many people start these things and just do it for a few years and then go do whatever else, right? So if you really think about it, okay, this is one customer. And this isn't the first customer that said like, oh, we're going to have you. We've had customers bring us back for other work. We've had customers say like, when we have more work, we're calling you. Mm-hmm. So, okay, if we over the years have 100, 200, 300 customers who all have gotten our services and are like, yeah, we are calling you back because you communicate well, you do good work, whatever. We, you're the first contract, you're the first contractor we'll call to do the job. Mm -hmm. You stack up enough of those people because you're like, you're living to help the customer. You don't have to market. You just, you're, you're just, all you're doing then is uh, like satisfying customers mm-hmm. forever. And it's all repeat. It's the same customers coming back. Sure, it might not be for five years, but it's the same customers. And you just, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so if you think about it that way, like you can service people for their whole life and then their kids' lives as long as you're willing to dedicate your life to something and do it long enough. Yeah, I mean, that's what like even thinking about like cars. Like, growing up, my dad had just one mechanic that he always went to. Right. And, like, that was the family mechanic. Like, everyone that had an issue just brought their car to them until they eventually retired. But... Right. I mean, you can do that. I mean, you have to think, right? We're 30. Mm-hmm. We wow. could... <clears throat> averaging 30. <clears throat> and we could potentially like keep doing this for like 40 years oh dude don't even say that 50 it's 50 years so you have to think people were helping now if they're in their 40s right we could be helping their grandkids even in that time right oh for sure Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah that's a good point so uh yeah it's very interesting i it's, it's been it's been a fun like world to be a part of again yeah and like hands on a part of. Yeah. It is I I think about it and I'm like, we could have picked really any other industry. Yeah. It, it would have just been way fucking smarter to pick any other industry. You picked probably the most complicated industry to be in. Dude. Fucking A. Mm-hmm. Like what 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 was my thought? I understand. Like and we've talked about it on here before. The more we get into this, the more like we understand why people just do general construction for a little while and then they specialize after like once they have a good product then they start specializing it just makes so much sense so much sense dude 
the <laughs> no like no bullshit the more you're you're exact the the more like just doing it now i'm like I like I know that it, I know the best thing we could do is just say like yeah we interior renovate mm-hmm. that's it like that would be the best thing we could do mm-hmm. it's just like that that's it but I mean I suck at taking my own advice right but also I mean we do still do flips and stuff so you have to think we'll always be doing probably all of the work for the flips so we'll always have connections for people to do the other things. Well, and that's that's literally why we're doing what we're doing. Is like we have now grown and expanded our, our our network of individuals we work with, and they're like, "Hey, Sean, we like working for you. We get paid on time. We never have any questions. Can you keep finding us work, and we'll keep giving you like a, a preferential pricing? Mm-hmm. Is that a good word? Yeah. Fucking dude, look at these words coming out of my mouth. Um, and so that like, it, it makes me like, once we like, it's, it's very difficult to find good subs at a fair price. Mm-hmm. Very difficult. Mm-hmm. And even dude, I found some subs at high prices who suck. Yeah. And I found some subs at good prices I found most subs at, at good prices below. Mm-hmm. And um, and so once you start getting these guys, I'm like, fuck, dude. Is is um is like building a garage and attaching it to a house, our wheelhouse? No. But is it the wheelhouse of multiple dudes we work with? Yes. So should I turn down that those those jobs? No. I should. Figure out how to fucking do the jobs Mm -hmm. so I can give them to the guys looking for the work because what happens then? They don't have to go do the thing they don't want to do, which is quoting and fucking doing sales. Mm -hmm. They get to go do the work that they want to do. What do I get? Well, I get some cheddar on top for doing organizing and being out of my comfort zone, learning the shit because eventually that's what I want to do full time is just the like sales portion of it and doing that. You know what I'm saying? Generally. So anyways... When you look at it like that, we got the connections. We might as well help people. Mm-hmm. Help as many people as we can. What do you got for me, baby? You got this little smirk going on. What else can we talk about besides the business? Besides the business? Mm-hmm. <sighs> all right. This isn't our business, okay? This is just life. Okay. <sighs> so I had coffee today mm-hmm. with Aaron. Mm-hmm. It was good. It was fun. Philosophical. Mm-hmm. Had a nice little jaunt around Eau Claire. Mm-hmm. All right, this is what it was. It, so, no. There's, there's this. Um, he brought something up, and I think he was referencing a, a book. Um, and I can't remember what it was, but anyways, it was laid out really well that. You, the man's, man's search for meaning. Have you heard that man's search for whatever? The whole, the whole premise behind it is a neat concept where in order for you to have a purpose and like be fulfilled or like be happy with what you're doing, your needs need to be met. So if you're not getting paid and you're not comfortable and you're not able to do it like, do the things in life you want, it's going to be very hard for you to stay in something long term, mm-hmm. right? So your needs need to be met. You need to be doing something that you are skilled in and have some level of passion about. Now, you don't have to be like, oh my God, I just love my job so much. I live for nothing else. But if there's certain things in your job that you find passion behind or that you enjoy certain aspects of your job you really enjoy, right? So if you have a skill set and you have some like level of passion with it, and then lastly, you're helping others. Cause you can't just do you can't just be like skilled in getting money but not ever helping people. It's not a way to be fulfilled. It's not a way to like uh, have purpose, a purpose-driven life, right? Right. And so you need those three things to 
to fully have a purpose in life. Otherwise, if you're lacking in one of them, it will only be temporary. Hmm. Thought it made a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Fun. Sure. What do you got, baby? I feel like I've been talking this whole time. You have been. Was this coffee decaf? Or did you put a little, a little good good in it? I didn't. So it must be decaf. You're the one that made it. I also don't have to poop, so it's probably decaf. Yeah. Um, there was one time we wanted decaf coffee for podcasting. This is back in Robin Road. And, like, I made the pot of coffee, whatever, and we're podcasting, and we're just going. And then, I like, it dawned on me. I was like, oh, shit. Sean, I made real coffee, not decaf coffee. <laughs> But no, Sean made the coffee this time, so it's his fault. And now we're out of decaf coffee, so we need more. Yep. Um, I don't know. Been working. Um, we went and got our, did our, uh, went to the Cairo today, had our re exams. Sean and I are both getting worse, so that's exciting. That's what we're good at. Yeah, yeah. Um,. Yeah, no, we'll figure it out someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna do a jujitsu. Uh, I'm gonna do a jujitsu comp That's April twentieth. That'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I should go do that. Uh-huh. And uh, my, I mean, my, my only thing is, I'm like, I just can't get injured mm-hmm. on the on the tr- train up. Yeah, you know, because I'm always fucked up. You haven't been as much lately. I feel well, that's true. I guess you also also have been only going. Mm. Haven't been going much. Yep. <clears throat> so now I'm gonna ramp up to training seven days a week again. I'm going to need to recover. Yeah. Um, I'm really excited. I'm gonna go to Puzzles Pasta and Pino with my fam next weekend. Um, it's just gonna be interesting because so it's teams of four. You get a puzzle. Four bowls of pasta and two bottles of wine. And it's a race for the team to finish all of it first. So I'm very curious how it's going to go. It's like the coolest thing ever. I told Brooke about it today. She's like, I got to tell Aaron. We got to we gotta go. I know how to do it. Take the two smartest people. Mm-hmm. Don't fill them with pasta or wine and make them just work on the puzzle. And then one person downs two bottles of wine, and the other person eats four the four bowls of pasta, and then you're good. No, it's a terrible idea. You think so? Yeah. Mm. Why is that? Who's gonna eat four bowls of fucking pasta? If I was there, I think I would probably be able to give it a whirl. We also don't know how big these bowls of pasta are. I've eaten three and a half pounds in one sitting. Yeah. When was the last time you did that, big boy? All I'm saying is. Every morning, I eat a pound and a half of food to start my day. Okay? Is it actually a pound and a half? I, I weighed it the other day. Because I was like, is this actually a pound and a half? It's legitimately a pound and a half. Because it's what? Six ounces of beef. Six, six ounces of beef. Six ounces of rice. Okay. Then about two ounces of egg. Two ounces of egg. Probably two ounces of spinach and onions. Yep. And then... Oh, and the liquid. The chicken broth. And then the... Um, sauerkraut mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah i guess pretty close because that'd be 16 alone there and then i usually eat a banana with it mm-hmm. so i'll give you the pound and a half with the banana so i do dude every morning bang and then um so i think dude i bet you like i bet you if it's under if it's under three pounds on almost any given day i think i could take it down dude have you seen those um memes lately that have been like Oh, I eat some, or I don't eat that much food. And it's like comparing 1,300 calories at a fast food place compared to like 1,300 calories at home. Oh, yeah. And it's like three times the amount of food. People don't understand. My my morning breakfast is 1,000 calories. And it's a pound and it's a half. It's a pound and a half of food. It's 1,000 calories. The average person cannot consume that. No. Like the average person cannot fucking get up, do their shit at 7.30 a.m., they cannot take down that kind of food. No. Because even mine's only five, max seven ounces. Yeah. No, nah, people, it's just. And and when, like, going throughout the day, I'll have three more meals. And most of the time, it's 12 ounces a meal. 
it's almost always 12 ounce meals mm. or to you know and so like each of those 12 ounce meals not including my fruit i add with it so it, you know it ends up being like one pound meals three more of them I, it's i i, I don't I, do, I end up with 3000 calories a little under 3000 calories like 2800 calories with four meals consuming a total of like four and a half pounds Mm -hmm. of food i got something really random for you okay let's go um unless we had more to that that's it dude i didn't even i didn't even know why we're talking about that so behind you have a set of wands right yeah um so those are the patronus ones and i have the professor ones too but they're not up there okay and i don't remember when or where i put them okay all i had for you just a random thought i noticed it okay not the last podcast last friday's podcast i noticed it and it's just been bothering me because i've been just sitting here and one they're not straight so i don't know what happened there but two i'm like where did i put those other ones Mm. i have no clue they're probably in the cabinet somewhere Mm -hmm. but still i'm like why would i've taken those down i don't know Maybe it's too crowded, and that's why I took him down. That could be. Mm-hmm. That could be. Um, I'm excited to get the basement gym. Yeah, that'll be really nice. We've been slacking on that. To finishing it? Yeah. Yeah, well, we've been working, working on other houses. Working, making income. Yeah, because my plan was to do office work in the mornings, go to the gym, and then work on the basement in the afternoons. But I haven't even really been at the office, so I can't really do that. Yeah. Yeah. We'll caught up. We're going to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eventually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I guess. Uh, what else we got? Hey, else? I don't really know. Sean and I don't do a whole lot. If you guys haven't noticed, um, we went to Muskie Tank. Ah, yes, we did. There you go. Um, it was about innovations i wanted to kill myself i have no idea it was the fucking dullest shit i've been to yet yeah it was very weird um so it's basically taking the idea that you don't need a new idea to start a business you don't need the perfect idea you just need to do shit yeah yeah um the one guy i really liked because he's uh like a teacher professor at uw stout and so he's in the program for entrepreneurs i guess is that the guy that didn't say much yeah Mm -hmm. um so he was talking about how their program how if you have like a business idea you can submit it to them and they can run it through all their advisors and see if it's something that um like it, and I don't even think it's like you're like a student or whatever, but it's like they can offer you their services to help you with that. that oh, business. interesting. I like that a lot. Yeah. So it's really interesting because um, it kind of makes it seem like then like once your business gets accepted, then you can use them for any like needs you have. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's cool. Yeah. So that was that was the one guy. The other guy just is a serial entrepreneur. The other dude just fucking verbally stroked his cock the whole time he was up there. Yep, yep, he did. And uh, I was like, hey, bro, I really appreciate you telling me all this stuff. How about you give me, like, maybe one sliver of useful information besides you fucking stroking your cock in front of everyone? If any of you are business owners... And you have to do a presentation or something where you need to... Actually, you don't even have to be a business owner. If you're going to do a presentation on anything, have a good intro. And make it short and to the point and where people can understand your background. So, like, Sean can be like, I started my first business in 2018 with... um, 2017, babe. Chill. 2017 uh, with... Um, assisted living for disabled adults. I sold that business in 2020. One, keep going. 2021. 
Um, or you could say I grew that business and then got to a point where I sold it uh, to some other investors to then fund my home improvement company, which has been going on for three years. Right. And then you could say we've done a total of 20 flips, 20 customer jobs, blah, blah, blah. Right. Okay, good. Short, right. concise, to the point. People know what your background is. You've started two businesses, so that helps. Yep. This guy went on for five plus minutes. Each but, each time. Each time he opened his mouth. But just his intro. His just intro his was intro absurd. was like five to eight minutes. So by the end of it, everyone's on their phones not paying attention because no one gives a fuck. Bro, we don't give a fuck, dude. I'd say a minute or less is your intro. That's it. That's like all you need to give. Think about the dudes we had come speak at Recon. It's like they have a slide. They rip through their slide of who they are, what they did, their family, whatever, and then they're on to the next thing. Right, because if it's something like about the business that pertains to your presentation, then you'll go in more depth about it then. Right. But for an intro, no. People oh just did. That dude just wanted to, that motherfucker had enough ego for everyone in the room. Oh, I my think. God, yeah. Yeah. It was really bad. It was not good. Um. So, yeah, I don't know. I've... So far, I've been to, I think, five musky tanks, and I've been impressed by one. So we'll see maybe if they can figure something out. And this last one, because you're supposed to, like, connect with new people. But this last one, there was, like, eight of us that knew each other. And uh, we haven't seen most of them in a while. So we were all catching up and so hanging out, basically. I liked it. And I loved it. It was fun. Um, I lo- Yeah, I loved the networking part afterwards, hanging out with everyone, chatting. That, that was, it was good to catch up with everyone. Mm-hmm. But yeah, as far as like sitting through it, I'm like, this, this is fucking stupid. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah that's I like the location. Lucette's really dope. Lucette's is beautiful. Let's do it every time. Let's go there. Let's just pound pizza, and drink, just not, just destroy our bodies. I love it. Recon um, business event. Wow, that hall would be big enough, wouldn't mm-hmm. it? And if it was the workshop one, I think that'd be really good for it. Wow. Even the normal one. Mm-hmm. Wow. Pizza for lunch, baby. Mm-hmm. Oh, damn. I like that a lot. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Huh. Not uh, the worst The idea next one's at the country game ground, so I'm kind of curious about that. Anyways, what'd you say? I'm not opposed to that. Yeah. Cool. What else we got? Anything else? Um, nothing really. We're, uh, what's coming up the pipeline in our lives? Gonna go get meat. Sean meat I, this weekend, baby. Sean and I went through half a cow in, um, four months. Yeah. Sean, Mimi, and I. Mm-hmm. Mimi does eat four pounds of beef every week, so. Mm-hmm. It's a big girl. Actually, more than that. A little more than that. Yeah, it's about five pounds a week. Um. It's good for her. Yeah, it is. She's a good, healthy pup. Um, so yeah, we're going to go get some more meat because we ran out of ground beef and chicken and bacon. Mm-hmm. And almost out of roasts mm-hmm. and our steak supply is holding on all right. That's mainly what we have left. Just some steak. And it's not even like the good steak. We're down to like sirloins and there's a, there's a couple good cuts left in there. Otherwise, we're like sirloins, round steak. And organ meat. I was going to say, don't forget the tongue and the and heart and liver. fucking organ meat, dude. That's like it. Um, if any of you have a dehyd- dehydrator or freeze dryer, let me know your inputs and what you think of them. Yeah. I'm just, I'm, I just, I'm curious if anybody has them and what they think. Cool. I like it. Anything else? No, I'm ready for bed. Me too. You going to post this in the morning or tonight? Tonight. Love it. All right, gang. Thanks for tuning in. We'll catch you Monday. Video should be up Saturday, maybe Sunday. Cool. Cool. On top of it. Yeah. Peace. See you.